it's very hard to know that when by the time you finish paying your bills and living, what you have left would be somewhat it better me this stay at my yard. It's when y'all get it's when y'all get the little pension. And you're gonna dead before you get it. So hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Anneke as you know, and today I've got with me Jordan. Hey Jordan, right? Hey, what's up? Jordan is a registered nurse in the UK and we'll get into some of the nitty gritty as to NHS versus private. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys. Yes, so we're here. So we're here with Jordan. All right, so Jordan works in the private sector. I work in the NHS. You lot have heard only hear enough things about me and the NHS already. And so we want to dive more into the private sector. Yeah, right? man, we'll get tonight. We'll get tonight. Yeah, man. Right tonight. All right. So firstly, how long have you been working in the private sector? I've been working in the private sector since May 8th, 2020. 2020? specific, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you came here initially, you came in. You was working in the NHS. I came up. Uh, I came up with the NHS program. Yeah. Okay. And then jump ship. A jump ship. Yeah. Why a jump yeah. ship? Well, you see, a jump ship specifically for two reasons: mm -hmm. financial reasons, and the fact that boy, NHS work you hard. You get me? And me, I just reevaluated my my situation. I said to myself. Why did I come to England? You get me? Everybody comes to England for different different things. Mm -hmm. I did not come to England for the money. So I took that out of the way. Okay. But then it's very hard to know that when by the time you finish paying your bills and living, what you have left would be somewhat... It may have made stay at my yard. And this is like working for the NHS. This is working for yeah? the NHS. So okay. me said to myself, say, I've got to see what can go on. Mm -hmm. and thing and i started to explore and um i realized that the, what i needed to, to do i came off a professional development i can't professionally develop if there's nothing to do what may i go do i can't i yes. honestly couldn't mm -hmm. so i said you know what let me let me see what i go on out there and the private the private work with me. so are I you saying that it. professional development was difficult in the nhs well, you see, I never really stayed to watch, you know, mm. because at, at that time, coming up, in when I just came, you, you weren't just doing ASCII straight away. Okay. You were working as an ad adaptation nurse, which was a band four, and then you move on. Oh, okay. Yeah? So for those of you who don't know, ASCII is the exam that you do when you get to the UK. Um, you do your CBT, which is a computer-based test, in your home country. But when you get to UK, you do an ASCII exam, which is the end part of you being registered as a nurse here in the UK. So Jordan is saying that when you came, you actually didn't get to do ASCII straight away. We didn't get to do ASCII straight away, okay. no. We, we had, um, think that even the process of coming to the, the United Kingdom was different um, because now you can do the CBT and come up and then you test and then you get your decision letter. In the U in back when I was doing it, mm -hmm. you had to pass the CBT and then get your decision letter, which was reached a certain level of processing, and then you are able to oh, test. Oh, really? So what they did was they said, Okay, you come up, you do like six to eight weeks of, of, of training and then you matriculate to your exam. Mm -hmm. You get me? In that six to eight weeks, that would have comprised of the most hard work I've ever done as a nurse. Wow. Because the thing is, you don't have a pin. So you're basically working as a healthcare assistant um, that is under the supervision of a nurse. Okay. You get me? That's a fancy way to say you're an HCA. Yeah. And then, and you, you got through it. You got through it. I, and I, I saw so what were the that, things that was expected of you? What were the, the, the duties that you were doing? Because obviously you're, you came from your country as a registered nurse. Yeah. You're from Jamaica, guys. And um, so you came from your country as a registered nurse and you came here and you could not operate as a registered nurse, basically. No, I could not. What were you expected to I do? I could not. My, my expectations were to, to, to open quotation, shadow mm -hmm. and adapt. Now, National Health Service um, has religiously been understaffed. It has been a very strenuous thing. And a lot of times the adaptation process um, becomes somewhat of more like a learn on the job type of thing. Okay. 
and depending on your unit you can be facilitated and depending on your unit depending on the, the pace of your unit it, it is really dependent on how much you are attained and um, I realized that and I said to myself will this align to my values and beliefs will this get to where get me where I want and I said um, let me try a different alternative mm -hmm. so I personally have done everything privately okay yeah so my academic achievements outside of my nursing degree, mm -hmm. I have done them privately, external has, to... Guys, trust me, him do only for something. Yeah. But that might be another time for another day. We'll tell you about his professional development, which is what he came to the UK for, and the man stick to him goal. He came to develop professionally, and so he did. Carry on. Yeah. So that, 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 for, that for me um, was, was very important. But again, I want to highlight... For, for persons who haven't gotten to the UK as yet, or for persons who are in the UK at the moment, your reason for coming to the UK is very important. It's very vital to your very even mental health. It is very hard to sit down and wade in the water while you are trying to get to where you are and you realize that it's not working. There is absolutely no problem with aligning, realigning your goal. In, in the evaluation of your care plans, they say if the goal is not met, you should reassess. Sometimes you just need to stop and reassess. There's no shame in that because guess what? Love and passion cannot go to the supermarket. Yeah? When you have your family and you want to pay for something and you want to buy something, window shopping not cute. Mm -hmm. That that not cool. So right. I personally see it and say, bossy boy like me, me cannot do it. I'm so sorry, but guess what? I have to do it somewhere else. I need to reach where I need to go. And because I know that, listen, I am not, I am, I am a Jamaican yesterday, today, and forever. The day might come that I want to go home. I have to go home better than I, I got here. Because them can't come take my career. Mm -hmm. So that was my, that was my, re, my primary reason. So that was basically your reason to go private. To leave the NHS and go private. And never which look answered back. answered one of our first questions. Why did you go private? So that was never look back. So professional development was on your forefront. On forefront. Your, primary that was the, reason. The eye on the prize. And so, not that, I think what he's saying is not that he couldn't have developed professionally um, in the NHS, but in terms of finance as well. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It, at the time, I was making and I was paying my bills. I had less than 5% of my salary left. Because it all depends on where you work. And I worked somewhere very close to London. Yes, I was living, I had moved off of the hospital accommodation to pursue living like living by myself. Because it's very hard to live in a shared space like that for me personally. So I went out. So I realized that if I pay my bills and I don't even have enough to make the payments for my academic development, what more sense is it? Yes, you can do it in the NHS. You honestly can. Yes, but at the same time, you have to understand that you do not want to get lost in the system. Before you know it, one year pass, two year pass, three year pass. You realize, good, you're a band six, but a band six without qualification. What is that? Just a regular nurse on a pay band that somebody might not um, pay you as when you go to a different job. Mm -hmm. So what did I say? can't afford this I, can't, I really can't afford this so what did i do i said okay because you hear everything you hear all the things about private oh you're easy for lose your pain you're easy for do this you're easy for do that if i had listened to people then i wouldn't move so i risk it for the biscuit and here we are and here we are so how long have you been in private about no, three years. Now. Three years. Three now. solid years and some months. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, you have no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. And I have faced a fair share of um, difficulties in private. But again, it's so tell us about each individual person. Tell us about some of that. Because some of the things that people say is that, like you said earlier, you're very easy to lose your pain in the private sector. There's lack of support. There's lack of um just... You know, the holistic care for the job and uh, there's a lot of and pressure. And I think that is very subjective. I heard that there is um more staff, uh, more nurse-to-patient ratio is higher. It is higher. And lack of staff and all of that. So talk to us about that. Firstly, uh, a lot of these things are very subjective and is, it does not depict the entire picture of private, private care homes. Mm -hmm. 
yes, the pop the, the patient to nurse ratio is higher, but dependency is much lower. Okay. You have care you have the you have the care assistant staff that handles um about eighty five percent of the activities of daily life. You as the nurse, your job is to maintain quality care. So it uh, it is expected that you assess, you prioritize, and you escalate issues that present. Mm -hmm. So if it is that you are articulating yourself properly and utilizing what you've been taught in school, the bulk of these problems does not exist. Because if you go back into government, it's the same thing you face. So short staff is a is a is a constant between both parties. So we're gonna throw the the the, the, the short staff. We are in England right now. It's, it's not, not short, short staff. staff. We are in the U.S. right now. It's, it's not, not short, short staff. staff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's take the short staff one mm -hmm. out. If they say you're gonna lose your pin, your pin. Listen, the only person can make you lose your pin is yourself. Yeah. If you don't know, you just don't know. You require more support. I've never seen somebody get themselves in trouble who seeks support. I was given the advice when I just was leaving NHS from a, a, a staff nurse who went into care homes and then he went back into the NHS. He said care homes is like a football game. You keep passing the ball. And that's what I, that was the, man, the, the mantra I went with. So anything at all that I was outside of my scope, I escalated it. And I did not have issues in regards to my practice. Now, there's a bit of social norms that, that, that everywhere you go has it as well. So that is another factor that you can't use alone to, to judge care homes. NHS has their own um, values and beliefs and their own social structure. They have their groups. Um, care homes have their groups. And it's all about how you merge into them. I am not one, I am not one to go and overshare. I am not one to, to, to blur the lines of professionalism. I keep it strictly professional. So honestly, I've never had these issues where I see people come and say, oh, um, me and person fall out. No. Mm -hmm. So I think that the bulk of the myth about care homes is individually, and it, it's, it's an individual thing that has been blown up. Uh, somebody else's belief mm -hmm. that has been put onto other people. Because you can't bash it until you try it. Right. That's what I, I tell agree. people. I agree. So if you're in the NHS and you say, boy, this not work out, you need to achieve what you achieve. Go and go try the private. Yeah. Nobody not tell you to leave your work. Go and join as a bank. Do a one extra shift. Do a one extra shift. See if that is for you. Remember, you can do that, guys. So, yeah. And that's what I was always thinking as well. Like, If you want to try before you go over there to decide that, okay, I'm going to completely leave the NHS like Jordan did to go to the private. You can just do as agency work. Just remember that guys that are on tier two visa, you're only allowed to work twenty hours outside of your regular job. So the and job it has to be in your field, right? It has to be in your field, and the job that sponsored you. Outside of that, you're only allowed twenty hours. Correct, right? So even on the go, the go venture, and the money starts sweet, you know, don't get ahead of yourself because remember that come ILR time, which is indefinitely to remain, come your five years when you're going to apply for your permanent residency. Those things will be held against catch up you. With you. Yeah. And guess what? You think the 20 hours is okay. Cool. But if your place of sponsorship has expressed that the staffing needs available is priority right here, and you are one thing say, boy, the money I pay me better out there, so and you're going to try to do it. You are going to be in trouble. Because, oh, I didn't know that. Yes, because okay. the reason why they put the cap on the 20 hours is to not interfere with the needs of your place of sponsorship. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So don't go out there and then you think that me from the money, me from the money. There are steps that you have to take. There are steps that bring you peace and keep you legally intact. But that's for a different day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll keep and we'll it come back, now. guys. We'll yeah. come back about the other things. All right. So one of the other questions people talk about, a lot of people go for NHS because the pension scheme. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love the NHS. Pension is quite attractive. Mm -hmm. Is there such thing in the private sector? You have a regular pension. Okay. You are paid higher than an NHS nurse. You are paid higher. What you choose to do with your body is up to you. But you get the normal people's pension or... You you get whatever pension that is with the employer, and the employer paid their contribution to your pension. That's it. Okay. There's no other. There's no other thing about the pension. The NHS pension. 
but to each his own. Yeah, to each his own. That's true. It's top tier. People do tend to, but there, 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 there's actually people in the NHS, like some of my colleagues now, that are actually opted out of being pension. Well, you're wrong, them. Because people have their own personal reasons. Some it's, when say, all get, it's when you all get the little pension. <laughs> you're tell you before you get it. When you all get the little pension. <laughs> You wanted everything from me for yeah. about 10 years. <laughs> and you have to see I give my a 60 something. Right. Before they used to give it, they used to give it in a low in a loan sum. Okay. Loan sum. And then all of a sudden now you push back the date and you now give me it in a full, keep it. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Jordan's personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in the NHS and you're thinking about it in the long run. Keep your pension, mm -hmm. cause after I think it's six months or one year, you can't get you it can't back get anyway. It back, guys. So, yeah. so the decision is have to be made before. All right. So, new um, I'm gonna say the newcomers to the UK. I think you gave some sort of advice as to what to do mm -hmm. um initially. So you were saying that some people choose to stay in a shared accommodation, some people go out. Newcomers to the UK. What would you advise them in terms of working in a private, working in a NHS, um, and then just basic everyday living so i think what would you say to them the first rule whether you work in nhs whether you work in private live within your means creep before you walk they got my sister up on the stage, man. i They're know for i know for just come up here and want come go every single party where i keep or to go to the friend them then no come back around come and beg people money that's not cute <laughs> it don't cute on if you tap it on if you tap oh, it Lord, you were worried you cannot see people that are here for years that have struggled that have pinched and now have their things and you are gonna try to keep up with them don't do it don't do it Pray before you walk live within your means and that's a serious thing you know like my, i said to jordan earlier my sister i never forget that statement from my sister said that to me once when i was in nursing school and honestly if you would follow by that live yeah. within your means like, don't just look and say, you know, like the social media out there, you know, people really put on yeah, man, I know. social so media is not life, you know. <laughs> so far. It's not life. And people really do live for social media a lot of the times. Yeah. They make bad decisions and then they're paying the piper for it. Of course. Because you're saying that people of come course. and people, people are borrow. I but borrow, 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 <laughs> borrow like them piece of people are bank. But the, the second most important thing is mm -hmm. Kiba, your mouth. For those who are not Jamaicans, Kiba means you made the action. Keep Please your understand mm -hmm. that there is not every response needs a reply. Mm -hmm. Yes, you just come out of people in country. As you come, you come as an adaptation nurse. Learn the culture before you come here and try to tell the people them how to run them show. So how did you manage that? Because the Jordan and no, I never, never learned it you know. properly. I okay. never learned it properly, and I don't get me in trouble because for the it. The you Jordan, really shut me more, more guys, than I have this problem. The Jordan that I know in nursing school, this man don't keep him out. You know, anything that on in mind, he's not gonna tell you. Like we never get on in a nursing school. No, don't no, get me wrong, you know, Anna. If somebody cross me, you know, yeah. listen, me go, me go, me go, me go deal with your wicked. Me go make you know, say, listen, I am not the one. But it is within context. Yes, there are certain professional professional ways that you can handle things yes and you see them time there because we as jamaicans we're so reactive that we don't sometimes stop and think about the social ramifications that come very with true. our actions very true. so you go so boom now you have you have an issue with a colleague you either you don't say something you don't say you don't say nothing more time you know but then you make up your face making up your face is no different than the better they come thump them down. <laughs> right? Emotional intelligence is, a, is imperative mm -hmm. when you come here. Learn that not everything you need to take personal or to react to. Somebody asking you if you're okay multiple times, then just ask if you're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Get to know that it is okay. Yes? If you choose to answer and how you choose to answer determine you having a nice time on the ward, or where you are, or a difficult time. You don't want to be labeled that angry person, which unfortunately, no, for me. It, it reached me. It reached me. It reached me. Reach me because mm -hmm. me, me, a, a lot of times, you know, to you as a Jamaican, you say, brother, long one alone, my man. So that they're like, oh my God. They're very expressive yes. people, yeah. Is, is he okay? Is Jordan okay? Mm -hmm. 
how can we support him? Mm-hmm. Support me. You just want to leave me alone, lady. <laughs> yes. But you, you can't. Yeah. So understanding that there's a time and a place for everything is important as well. Just as important as living within your means. Because mm-hmm. having a workplace that you are annoyed of or you're finding it difficult to just be there, that is going to make your life even worse. Yeah, the peace is very important. So on, on, on the topic of peace as well, so another one of the attractive things that people speak about to the NHS, and this is just like when we hear people, and just what I know, what you experience as well, myself, is vacation days. Mm-hmm. So how does vacation days work in the private sector? So I know in the NHS, we have roughly about 200 and something days for the year. How, wh- how, many, how many vacation days do you get? 5.6 weeks. Okay. So it's almost the same thing? Basically. Okay. Yeah. But the only thing is you don't get paid if you don't come to work. So you, but you get paid for your vacation? You get paid for your vacation you in vacation. full. And um, if you don't come to work, depending on your organization, and I've been to a few organizations, you don't get paid. Okay. Because in the NHS, you're going to get five plus <clears throat> six weeks. I think it comes it comes out to about six weeks. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't aware that you actually get what about the same thing? Because people thing, made yeah. it out as if you don't actually get a lot of vacation days. It, I they think made that's, it out I like that's, that's a the norm. US. Five point six. I've I've been to I've worked in about six or seven years in Oakland. Five point six weeks is the, the average across the, the board. average across the board. Okay. And and um, depending on the amount of hours that you work, you accrue annual leave. As per the hours that you work. So right. what about sick days? Do you have sick days? No. Okay. None at all. So if you're sick None and you can't come, like you said, you, you don't just don't get, get paid. paid. Okay. Yeah. But that's one of the difference with the And I don't think that's a downside per se. Mm-hmm. It's just that you have to understand that um this is a private institution. Mm-hmm. The employer has to incur that as a loss. Yeah. Um, because human resource is a form of, of capital. Mm-hmm. So if I don't have somebody to work on my shift. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get somebody external. So the, so I have to pay somebody to replace you. I should have stand that loss. Mm-hmm. And and even if it was I, me personally, I wouldn't stand that loss either. So that's the manager in him speaking. Yeah, guys. <laughs> that is the manager side of Jordan because, of course, he has developed professionally to managerial level What we talk about that. Um, because technically speaking, the NHS is basically the same thing. It's just that... Um, it's the same structure. Yeah, it's just that they... they I guess they have more ways of covering or the, the funds or something because it's public. It's um in terms government. of the managerial um hierarchy of of NHS and private, there is absolutely no difference. the 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 government has laws and and the Health and Social Care Act doesn't change regardless of where you go. Um, what is required of you as a nurse in the NHS or in private is the same thing. It's entirely based on your job description. But your job description was made with the, um, with the alignment of the Health and Social Care Act and the policies and procedures of the Nursing Council. So what what the what the Care Quality Commission looks for, which is both in the hospitals and in private, their criteria is the same. Their 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 means of of assessment of a of an institution and and their grading is the same. Management wise, mm-hmm. in terms of how they how they are measured on in terms of their capability to provide safe and quality care is the same thing. The same thing. There's yeah. some there's a question that's come to my mind just now and I totally slipped my base on what you're saying, but it will come back. Um so opportunities, because you said you developed um yes. privately. Yes. Were those funded by your nursing homes or were those funded by you? It was funded by me personally, but if Depending on what you would like to do, your employers can send you to go and do it. It it entirely depends on the relationship. And this is why it is so important that when you have performance appraisals and you have supervisions that you express where you would like, where we'd like to be Mm -hmm. by the next time. What are some of the steps that they can take? Because it is it is a part of the organization's objective to empower their staff and to get the staff to where they would like. So self-actualization for a nurse um, is one of those positive reinforcements that maintains staffing and Mm -hmm. keeps retention to the organization. Mm -hmm. So if you come to a a supervision now with me or a performance appraisal with me as a manager, I'm going to ask you how best can the organization support you. If you tell me that you would like to do this course 
And this course is directly correlated with the organization that you can help the organization. I see no issues why the organization would not send you. So, for example, in the care home, what they do a lot um, is the six steps mm -hmm. for death and dying. Okay. They like to send um, their nurses there for the end of life care a lot of times. They send them to do the syringe driver course. You name it, once it is beneficial to the organization, mm -hmm. it is always good to have somebody trained in, in that thing. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it can help the other members of staff. So, so yes. for you yourself, yes. why did you choose to do to, to fund yourself privately? Did you express that to your managers at the time or did you just go ahead and... Well, at the time when I started my master's degree, I was at a... Yes, guys, master's. I was in a... How, how would I say this? My, my, the, the organizational structure in that home was stagnant, okay. i.e. the same people that did it from eternities. Okay. They were there for a long time. Mm -hmm. With the understanding, I, I, I had to do my diploma first, my level okay. 7 diploma first. And after I did my level 7 diploma, they were honest enough to say, Jordan, ideally, um, we do not have the capacity to take on someone else um, in terms of management. Okay. So with that being the understanding, I decided, and I, and I had already gone independently to do my diploma. Mm -hmm. I had to ask myself the question, does staying at this organization, although I was so comfortable and I was perfectly fine, I had no issues at all with them, would this help me to, to reach to my overarching goal which was for professional development and the honest answer was no okay so unfortunately i had i went and i left that organization mm -hmm. um and it was solely based on professional development because i knew and they were honest enough to say i'm sorry we do not have the capacity to take you on mm -hmm. so i left in about them i left about 25 percent into the way of my master's and I went to somewhere else where I could have used my diploma. And that's when I started off and I became a band 7B. Right. And then from there, I went, I started to go up and up and up. Yeah. And then after I completed my master's, I actually had completed and said, okay, let's see what this management thing can do. And then I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we wanted yeah. to. So we wanted to go into there, but you've basically jumped, you've said it to us. So yeah. came to UK as a band 5 nurse. Obviously, band when you come... Four. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. So obviously when you come, you actually don't work as a band five straight away because you have to wait on your asking, you have to wait to be pinned. When you get your pins, so technically for the most part, you're working as a band three. If you come in the NHS, you're working as a band three. So you're saying in the private, you work well, from a band four. Enough, no, oh, funny okay. enough, when I started at Ashford and St. Peter's, on our papers, on our COS coming up, certificate of sponsorship coming it band up, four. it was band three. Okay, okay. But then the chief nurse had announced that the adaptation process is a denotation of band four. Oh, okay. So when we come now, we are say, oh, I'm gone. why you are giving a new contract for sign as a band three or we just reach here? And it, we were unruly, but, you know, big up to that crew. And we <laughs> said, no, when I signed the paper, the chief nurse just said we are band four. Because the difference between band three and band four is a big difference. I think it was almost okay. three grand, 3,000 pounds, the okay. difference. And know. she just announced that we can get up increase we now come sign the papers in the band three okay. so we started off as band four adaptations oh, but there okay. are other places that start you off as band three most places because my workplace started off as a band three yeah but because they do their oski quite speedily yeah, no, once you once you sit your oski you, mm -hmm. you you you, are, you go to a band four before you get your pin yeah so you start off at a band three the day you sit your oski and they know that you've sat your oski you contact hr they move you to a band four so that yeah. that next pay you'll be getting band four really and then when you're pinned yeah. then you get your band five so you see you see even with your delay in pinning mm -hmm. we didn't have that mm -hmm. so if you pass exam the friday mm -hmm. by the monday your pin is reinstated oh, okay yeah because we had gone through the process of Checking the information, everything right, right. before we right. came to England. Mm -hmm. So then, as soon as you get, as soon as you pass the exam, pin ready. Yeah, it was it was a process. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't long for me. For some people, it's even longer. Yes. Because N N NMC actually, guys, I've had some new changes, which is actually delaying people's process for actually getting pinned. Because I was speaking to a nurse last night, actually, who's a nurse in the private sector as well. Mm -hmm. She passed her ASCII from May. Now it's August, and she only literally well, it's September now actually. She just got her pin end of August. Well, I don't think NMC is... The, I don't think it's because of the new changes. 
I think that people must understand that NMC is an organization, and like any organization, when dealing with, with copious amounts of application, it takes time. No, there I are... think there have been some new changes that's delaying. Yeah, so what happened well, is what that before, that rem- remember, you know, our English-speaking Caribbean countries like Jamaica, we mm-hmm. didn't have to do the IELTS, the English speak, the English exam. We didn't mm-hmm. have to prove anything for because we were from an English-speaking country yeah. and you were studied in English. No, you need this specific letter from the university that you went to to show breakdown. Yeah, so that's the changes that's delaying people now. Really? To show this breakdown of all the clinical hours, theory hours, and something to say, something about English. Well, that is so a simple letter. In that it is, but what happened is that people don't know so oh. it, that letter is not that letter not reach NMC yet. So you finish your ASCII and mm. NMC not have the letter there because people don't know. Well, if so you don't have the letter, they one just, of my just videos, link, link, link in the link and for it, and we can set you up. That right. It, so it, it's not something that is specific to one person. It's, no, it's, it's just not. a general letter that we it's have. General. So if you need it, you just let us know. It's general. So in one of my videos, I covered that and the things that are really delaying people from getting their pin. And that's one of the things. So there's a specific letter that you need to ask from your university. And so when they send you a transcript, let them send it at the same time. So it's already in the system. Right. But that's, a, that's on a side note, guys. So coming back to the care home. So one of the things I was also told, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you don't give IV medications in the care home. We don't. Mm-hmm. So that's a difference between the nursing, the N- 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 NMC, the NHS and the private. So... Basically, most people that are in the care home, are they, what well, are, what, what's, the, what's the mobility fancy, like? I've known of one fancy nursing home that, that does IVs, but that's a one-off, and they had, they, had, they had done meticulous training for their staff to do it, and that's, that's a home in London. Okay. Sorry, so most care homes are um, tablets, basically, orals, orals, just orals, whatever, and subcuts. They do subcuts. And subcut for the end of life. Any IMs? I am, um, yes, you can do IMs if, for example, it's a monthly psychotic medication. Oh, yes. okay. Yes, we do IMs as well. But you're saying for the end of life, um, patients that are like on a syringe driver, that's it's a special. It's special. That's um, a special training. Yeah, you do a special training for it to use the the syringe driver, mm. and depending, there are multiple types of syringe drivers, but we mostly stick to to one type. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. So. What I heard is that, also, I keep on saying what I heard, right? Because mm-hmm. um, it is really what I heard, is that the staff level, we, 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 we kind of covered that already, staff level yeah. in the nursing home, they're saying that it's much more short staff. But what you're saying is that even though um, the NHS will probably get agencies or bank to cover their staff, at the end of the day, the carers actually do 85%, 85% of the of daily life. And it's not as if the organization does not try to get the agency staff as well. But it is as equally hard as the hospital to get to these get agency to staff to yeah, come. Yeah. And you have to understand that agency is a, some, a lot of times much higher than the average cost for for the regular members of staff mm-hmm. because they are as per needed workers, so they are paid a bit higher. Mm-hmm. So being cost effective, if sometimes the home can work manage. with the, the manage with the bare minimum, it does they operate like that sometimes because... Mm-hmm. If if there is continuous use of agencies and the bed count is is um is not up to par, then unfortunately there the persons will always will have to be reduced, mm. and in the long run that doesn't help anybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And in terms of I heard about this blackmail sometimes in the nursing homes with like your costs, like you know like it's almost like they hold it over your shoulder that they have your costs and. Well, the nursing Speak council. That, the maybe. nursing council had published an article where they asked um, care homes to not use the nursing council as um, as a as a as a show of force, mm-hmm. and I think that in it is entirely specific as to where you go. That is not the general consensus of care homes, not even in the slightest way. Mm-hmm. And for you to get yourself in a predicament like that one. Where that would have been that would have been the case, I suggest you wheel and come again, check and firstly check yourself, yeah. and then review the, the 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 review the code of conduct mm-hmm. of both your organization and yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that there aren't one-off situations where there is just a blatant um there's just a blatant set of biases, but there are ways and means how to do it. 
and you must always understand that you are in an organization yes in truth and in fact yes they have your certificate of sponsorship you are binded to them for the, the, the duration of that certificate of sponsorship so although equality and diversity you should not be doing that and you should not be putting it over it in technicality they're not wrong mm -hmm. yes yes you are binded to the person yes the organization yes you and the organization have to get along yes so if the organization say to you that you might not be a good fit for them, there must be a reason why they say it. Yes? And sometimes them say when you're under a lion mode, you take time, pull time. it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you know that you have an issue with your employers, are you have everything for lose. Because mm -hmm. if they pull the COS, you have 60 working days to leave. To, to, to find something else oh, or you're okay. in a trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So also nurses, in terms of coming and starting, mm -hmm. would you recommend, especially coming from a different country where the, 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 the health culture is a lot different here, especially mm -hmm. most of the hospitals now that are moving towards electronic, mm -hmm. the whole epic um, genre. So nothing is paper-based anymore. No. Everything is electronic. Would you advise a, a nurse, a fresh nurse that's coming from their home country, to come and start in the NHS first and then go private or would you what what would you say it doesn't matter it okay. doesn't matter where you start out I think it's your mindset and how you you bring across yourself okay. um understand that there's a difference between knowing and there's a difference between telling okay if God gave you two ears and one mouth listen more, more than you talk speak less you get me mm -hmm. learn it before you bash it. Mm -hmm. Yes? The people of them system long before you. You can't be that one guy that now nah, get it. Something wrong with you. <laughs> so, my advice is, whether private or whether NHS, yeah. come with an open mind. Do not come with the Jamaican behavior and the Jamaica hospital where you can sit down around nurses station and chat and lip on your phone. And... No. Come here with an open mind and a okay. willingness to work. Yeah. And then from there, your life will be easy. Yes. As of using your phone up here is not, it is not shunned upon. But my gosh, if you have your work for do, do your work. Do your work. Do you ask you for nothing? Do, do your, your work. work. Yeah. After your work is finished, I'm 99% sure no manager will have an issue with you going on your phone yeah. once the work is finished. Yeah. You're not going around the phone no pa run, run with a patient. Right. You know, they on Snapchat, you're on Instagram. Yeah, you're in not, your earphone your earphone while, you're them while you talk to your patient. No. Just do your work. Do your work. And most of the problem then what people come with, Jamaican, Jamaicans come with the concept that, yo, they don't want nobody to talk to them. Mm -hmm. They have a problem with hierarchy. I think oh, you yeah, come at people yeah, in the country and walk and with man, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I am... Even when I was in management, me come and meet a Jamaican. Mm -hmm. A nurse that was senior to me a yard. It's like she still thinks that man is some little boy, a student, who I must speak to her. So she come and she eyed tight and yeah. mm. say, so, oh, you're going to learn today now. <laughs> it's either me or you, two bull kind of opinion. <laughs> and after, you know what she come and say? She said, well, me a sell out. When all I'm asking her to do is to please do your job and align yourself with your job description. Yeah. It's not too much to ask. It is not too it's much not to too ask. Much you are being paid a salary. Yeah. You're not, you're not, not coming. Nobody begged you to come to England. Mm -hmm. You're a trained professional who was recruited. Mm -hmm. And we are recruiting you based on your qualification and your professional um, body of knowledge that we would like to utilize yeah. to further increase the workforce. That's all. It's only like a matter. No, make the system complicated. Yeah. No, make it not over complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think cut and go through, make your money, go work? Yeah. So, the long awaiting question is mm -hmm. salary of the NHS compared to private. So, you did both. Yeah. So, give me a look around the one. Private, private. What's your take home? Private. What was your take home when you was in the NHS? NHS about 1500 Take home. After take tax. Home. After tax. 1500 Yeah. That was after tax in um in the NHS. Okay. That is without any bank at all. No. That was yes. what year? Because it's much different. That was now. as I said, two thousand um two thousand twenty up to May eight two thousand twenty. Yeah. I was getting about fifteen hundred. Because the take home now for NHS after tax is like two thousand. 
thereabout. Yeah. And for a private, a private nurse starting off, um, well, it, it, it entirely depends on where you start off. Mm -hmm. There are different places that offer, but I think the base, the base that you should be getting in a care home at minimum is about 17 pounds an hour. And that's on a bad day. All right. So when I, when I said the per hour, you lost me, you know, because um, I want to know, like, the monthly. Because most the times, monthly, even a, a lot of our... You a lot of our, like, 2300 Okay. Because a lot of our viewers also know we don't understand yeah, the pound um, and the dollar. But they can probably, because most people here... About 2300 2300 pounds as yeah. a junior. Just coming. Junior, okay. junior, junior. And so then I, by one, fist, one year, you're gone up, like, 17 50, 80, 18. And when you reach senior, you go up in the 20s. So I'll show you a payslip. A nurse gave me an okay permission to show her payslip. She's actually not a band five as yet because she's awaiting her pin. Mm -hmm. So her take home was 2,500, just sometimes it varies. So yeah. after tax, mm -hmm. her take home was 2,500 pounds. And that's not a band five. She's actually operating as a band three at the moment yeah. in a care home. Yeah. So yeah, when you can see that on yeah. the screen. No. So and then when you, when you compare the work to value ratio, in a care home, if you know how to do your thing, you are using more than forty percent less less expenditure than a NHS nurse. Mm. Why? Because when we're there, NHS, the bed not even cool. True. You get yeah yeah get um yeah get True the green stories. the the, 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 the Kleenex mm -hmm. Kleenex and rub down the bed mm -hmm. wipe mm -hmm. wipe. Remember video. Remember said Anna. What would they <laughs> would they uh would they uh, NHS? The patient just discharged. What them say? Wrap up the air mattress. You want to see me stand up on air mattress? I put a put put air mattress. I roll it up. <laughs> you see me? Throw that down. Put it in the bag. Zip up. Ready again. Yeah. Get a regular mattress. Yeah. Move. Yeah. At it again. You just keep on And doing. I tell you what, especially with this epic, what you know I reach for now? With this epic thing? So everything is electronic, as I said, guys. So mm -hmm. when the patient discharge, it shows up in the system. Yeah, man. Site manager them just to say, bed ready. You just say, hey, I push the patient. Push uh, one patient are coming from push one You're like, who is this? You're not getting an hand over yet for the patient. Sometimes, them call you and say, oh, we have a patient for you. Patient for me? Yeah, man. You know the worst because part about once it? once the bed becomes available, site managers say that. And site managers are the people that allocate patients to these little wards. So once the bed becomes available, site managers say that the patients friend, are come. And she works in Gillingham. Big thing one. <laughs> the patient was discharged. Yes, on bed eight. But the system did not refresh mm. because the patient came less than 20 minutes later okay so the medication chart everything was not that of the actual current one so there it was no error of the nurses yes but it was a technological error that mm. the system the server didn't update in time mm. to show the brand new resident so it was showing the patient's name yes but it wasn't the it wasn't the right, the the right yeah mm. but you, you would know what was the right, medication because right. it it was entered into the system right. it is your expectation that it would update mm. yeah and what they did they had to detect it and detect it as a um as an error technological error mm. but that is the show you say in an nhs you don't no slow thing. down yeah. in a nursing home the patients are set yes mm. depending on where you are you could have a fast-paced nursing home, you could have a slow-paced nursing home, and you have those residents at the same time, sometimes six months straight, then nothing will change. Mm. You get me? Maybe somebody passed away, you get a new resident. And that's that's if you are allocated to the person. You might have salt and get, get, that, get that person. You do their care plans. After the care plans are done, you update them once a month. Mm. So okay. the expenditure okay. that I have to mm. exert mm. at a care home, mm. As opposed to much private. less, much less. Much and less. if I was still working in NHS, I couldn't be going to school full time. Okay. And 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 um and as my masters, some of the burnout, cause by you know getting the time for rest, mm. I was drinking coffee like five six. But don't coffee. you get time to rest, or you didn't choose time to rest? Cause in the NHS you work three days, basic. Your basic always is three days. Can and you live one off? Week can you live off three days a week? But then, we could work for three yeah. days a week. Yeah. But I've okay. cut it. At one point, at one point, myself, we have one good bridge in there in England. One. And, when we used to work on the same unit in come from Guyana, big up Quincy. And we used to have to say to our body it hard. If, in, if he's in C and D Bay, and I'm in D Bay, him give me a few minutes, say, yo, take a quick five. 
Uh, and that's how we had to go. So we were going and going and going and going. No end to it. And then we asked ourselves, no, man, we're too young for this, you know? Yeah. We're too young for this, How old were you, might I ask you, when you came to UK? Twenty. Twenty-three. 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 Do you mind telling the viewers how old you are now? No, I'm twenty-seven. Twenty-seven, 27 right now. And what has been your? Look, me don't look it. Me don't look it. Me know about why I'm work hard. What band are kids. you now? Because my friend came for professional development um, and so he did. On paper or yes. what I am right now? What are you at both? I don't know. What's the difference? I can I can apply up to a band eight C job and I'm and I am um I am qualified. Qualified. But I I, I work right now as a band six. As a band six. And my Why? reason for it mm. is at some point you must know when to stop. Okay. Yes? Not even God worked seven days straight. He <laughs> took one day off to rest. Sorry, I'm <laughs> You are not Superman. Mm -hmm. The money is all fun and game, but when you're sick, you have to spend the same money where you work yeah. to go buy. Yeah. So I had noticed to myself that the higher you get, is the more responsibility. And unfortunately, there are some things that are, that just cannot. You, it, you, it, you can't dodge it. It aggregates you. Mm -hmm. You can't create staff from where staff not exist. So your unit are going short. Mm -hmm. When your unit short, it brings more issues. Yes? Understaffing cause burnout. I may have a heart. So I used to feel it. I used to go down and go help them when, when they short. But at some point... That was you working at what band at that time? 8B. Okay. At some point, the camel back will break. Mm -hmm. And if I cannot create... I'm mean, not I mean a magician. So I said to myself, listen, rather than burn my nerves out completely, let me go and find somewhere that I can kick back, enjoy my time at work. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I enjoy my time at work is because my wife is also a nurse and we work at the same place. So I walked, I walked away mm -hmm. from the, the heaviness of 8B and come down to a 6 to make sure that when I go to work, I had a more meaningful time at work. So every night I would sometimes see my wife at work. We have a few minutes, we laugh, we chat, and you know, so we still have come home. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was that that was the plan after the academic, after the academic assertion. So I got it. Cool. What then? Mm -hmm. The question you ask yourself is what then? Yeah. And it happens a lot. Cause at that point when you're 8B, money the money isn't really per se. You mm -hmm. make the money and the taxman will take it from you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or you can live. Yeah? You have the work or you like, no problem. But it's very stressful. You can't have it all. Mm. There's some, they, they just, they always remember that you can never have it all. Something has to give. Mm. Yes? So I ask myself, would I rather run my, run my nerves down to the point where I'm coming home and I'm coming home with work? I am on call and I'm being called and asked. Mm. We are short. But the honest question that I want to tell them is, where well, are you both? Me not have nobody. Yeah. Me not have nobody, but yeah. I can't. Yeah. So I said, respectfully, um, I'm going to take a step back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to start to do what I would like to do. Yeah. Which is to have peace and quiet. Yeah. So now as a man six, when them shot, you not call me. You get me? Yeah. So I know how to do my job very well. No problem. But at some point, you keep running on the money, you will wither away. And you've got time now because... Young man's got his own business as well. So you've got time also yeah, to yeah. manage. So you've got family time and family, you can yes. you and can I start don't your have, business. I don't have to sit down and think about um oh do I do I do I go to work so much now? No. Because to further go into what I said was creep before you walk means that it took me four years to properly align myself to, to get to this level of comfort. Four years of hard work. Yeah. Four years of almost 60 hours a week. Wow. I also have a child. And my child was born halfway through my master's program. Right. So I had to be new dad and work. And this was work 60 hours a week. Wow. Yeah. So when you talk about oh, tired and got through it, got through it. I remember one, one time I come home and I eat. I'm going to fall asleep mid with food in my mouth. Wow. I almost choke. Not only the babies themselves. So. 
what if you beat it so hard? What yeah. you gonna do? And then not to mention that I was also I, I was also taking the risk that saying come remember in a COVID time and them say you can do the more any amount of hours you want. Who tell them kill that, it, man? <laughs> yeah, who kill tell it. Them, listen. Who tell them oh to say that, man? Gosh. Jesus, mm. we we'll kill it. And I made good use of it. Yeah. So always remember, align yourself with what you want. But that core understanding, you have to know what you want before you come up here. Because you will wade into the, wa- wade in the water. Yeah. And before you know it, three years pass, four years pass. You could have stayed Jamaica Jamaica go do your course. Mm-hmm. Enough people are here now can I get for them course. My colleagues right now, they have gone to do their specialization. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes? Mm-hmm. My specialization is management. Yeah. I have a diploma in strategic management. I'm, I'm a master's in business admin. So I am more a management nurse. Yeah. Anything management. I don't have to stay in nursing. Right. I can go and branch out. Yeah. So if anything, I made sure me say, boy, if one day they want to come for the old piece of pin, you take it. Do something take it and go on. Yeah. So yeah. I keep I kept my yeah. options open. Yeah. And this is how every person in the United Kingdom who is n- does not have a British passport should, should operate. Yeah. What if something goes wrong tomorrow? Yes, I know. What can be. I do? Yeah. If I go home tomorrow, will I still be marketable? Will I have to go back to be a staff nurse? Yeah. That is if you keep the license, because anything can happen. Yeah. What would I do with my life if anything happens? The the UK is such a land of opportunity that you do not have to subject yourself to, to just nursing. Yeah. You can do something outside of it at the end of your tenure yeah. or you start from now. So what I did was, while me young and strong, mm-hmm. put you some steps in place. Yeah. So now four years later, I can see what I've done mm-hmm. and now I can take it easy. You know, me say, I'll get comfortable enough. Because see, I get comfortable and you know what I do? We get fat. Yeah? That is the honest reality. Yeah. When you're there, you're happy with your yeah. wife and thing, you start yeah. to eat. And then when you start to eat, you start to sleep. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you work hard feet. So yeah, this is what you, this is this is always what you wanted. But you have to do with everything in with, yeah. with due context. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's worked very hard. And I must say I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you. I'm right. very proud of you. As a young man, you kept you kept your eye on that prize. Yeah. You kept your eye on the prize. I mean, like I said today, I was sharing with him today. I don't know if I've ever said this to you before, but we couldn't, we just couldn't take you in a nursing You are not a lot of other people. We just couldn't. You are not a lot of But, people. you know, our relationship has developed over the years. And, you know, I'm very proud to see what you've come and done and just where you are in life. He's now a business owner. He's a homeowner. You understand? And we'll talk about that maybe in another video I'll bring him back for you to teach us, teach me yeah. how to get on this property ladder because people say this UK property ladder is very hard, but it's not it's hard. feasible. It's it can be doable. done. Easily You've done doable. It. Others have done it. And would you say, in closing, the tax, is the tax worth, what is the big hollow balloon about working this money and people's main issue with UK nursing profession is that you are taxed heavily. So, you know, them have to jump from the 20% to the 40, maybe about 50. Um, would you say, what would you say? It's no under tax. Have, nobody has a nurse not paying no 50% tax. Because if you but was 40%. a nurse paying 50, 40, 50% tax, you'd have been driving the, the biggest range over your possibly can. You're not paying no 50% tax. You don't think the nurse is paying 40%? 40%, yes. Okay. But the 50% jump out when you're really a clock like some serious kind of yeah. like a 150 plus, something like that. If you are work that then, Oh, I go and do your thing. More you can't teach me how to make that amount of money. So the with nursing. the taxes that, with the money that you're earning in the private sector, um, and the taxes that you have to pay, is it all still worth it? I am going to make this explicitly clear. Let me even take off my glasses. All right, well, listen. If you don't pay the tax anywhere you're there, whether government or our private, one million. The tax is there. Don't you pay the tax on that Jamaica? Why you want to come up here, come cost to the people and buy them tax now? Yawa. No, pay the tax. The tax is there. You call NHS for free. Look at what other free things you have. You have to pay the tax. That is what keep up the, the economy. Yeah. Bad man. Just pay your taxes. Yes? End of. If you deem it appropriate that you would not like to pay as much, don't work as much. Yes? But if you have something to do, do it. Point blank. Do it to the best of your it, is a, it, is, it is something that you cannot control. Mm-hmm. It is outside of your hands. You cussing about it, now nah, change the facts saying I have to do it. 
but it's not something that you have to subject yourself to. You are subjected to 32% tax on a 12,500 pounds incre increment. Yes, if you work past that, you have to pay more. I just saw it work. Me, Anna, me met the rules. Anna, Anna met the rules. And if you don't want to pay, you don't have to worry. Just go work it then, bad man. Because honestly, these people that are paying this high tax bracket is because you are working. Ah, man, we are the road hard. So it's your choice. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. If you work within the regular standard hours, are just a little bit more, you will still be in the 20% bracket and you just pay a 20% tax. So anyone that's complaining about the higher taxes that you're paying is because you're choosing to pay. Simple as that. So. Simple as that. Yes, guys. So on that note, we will end today. Yeah. And I must say, I've learned a lot. I hope yeah. you have learned a lot. Um, oh, there's so, so much too. more. Like, guys, if you have questions, you can put in the comment below, right? If you have any questions for Jordan, I will still contact him. And yeah, or he will even see another comment and respond. Or I'll make another video. If there's anything else that you want to hear from him, he's here. He's very willing. And I'm very happy about that. So comment below, whatever else, whatever question you have about the private sector, the NHS, or just life in the UK on a whole. Enjoy and it. we will try to answer as best as possible. Yeah. All right, guys. But for now, this is Jordan, tapping out. And I'm Anna Kay. Thank you again for tuning in today. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.